Good morning, boys and girls. We are going to do some um, art projects today, we'll finish up what we started yesterday, and then since it's sunny outside, I'm gonna do this part of the lesson really fast so we can go outside and do um, some more fun um, art with the sun. So let's do calendar. Let's do our um, bead material activity with calendar. Let's do a new sight word, and then we, let's, let's get ready to go outside, all right? So, today is Wednesday, May the 20th. Tomorrow is Thursday, May the 21st. And then the day after tomorrow is Friday, our last day of kindergarten, May 22nd. Um, get your bead materials out right now. And we said that today is May the 20th. So we are going to make 20 with our bead materials. So we've been starting out this activity by playing the exchange game. So get your bowl of objects, get them all dumped out. And let's look at the number 20. 20 has a two in the tens place and a zero in the units place. So if we know we need two tens, Let's go ahead and start counting out our units, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I hope you stopped. You gotta stop. Stop when you get to ten. Stop when you get to ten and take a little trip to the bank. exchange for 110. Okay, we have 110, but look at how many tens 20 needs. 20 needs two of these, okay? So let's do the exchange game again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I hope you stopped. Good. Stop at 10. Scoop them up. Take a trip to the bank and exchange for 110. Okay, now let's look at what we have. I don't think you can see my tens. Sorry about that. Now, can you see? Two tens. All right, so our number 20 has two tens. So here's one ten and two tens, and it has zero units. Do we have any units there? We do not, we have zero units. So we've made the number 20. Two tens is 20. 10, 20, all right. Very nice. Let's get ready to do um, one of our sight words, a new sight word today. While I'm getting all those things out, I am noticing at my house in the window, the weather gnomes are saying it is sunny. That's why I want to hurry and get outside so we can do some shadow art and we need to finish up our um, activity from yesterday. Okay, so for sight words today, you'll just need your sand tray and then you'll need um, your book or your list so you can add your new word. All right, let's go over the ones that we've already learned and something is special about these words, remember, all of them are ending with the same two letters and these two letters, when they work together, say A. A-Y says A. W-Way. D-Day. Right. And today's word is St-Stay. S-T-A-Y, stay. S-T-A-Y, stay. S-T-A-Y says stay. I tell my dog to stay when he needs to not follow me. <laughs> Right now, we all have to stay at home from school. 
so we do not spread germs. Stay. Think about a sentence you can use with the word stay. And let's practice making stay in the sand. Okay. So stay is an S. So S is sort of a tricky letter. Um, a lot of times when, when we make it, I notice that children um, make it and it sometimes looks like a five. So look at the letter S. It doesn't really have any pointy parts. It's all very curvy, like a snake, okay? So when you're moving your finger in the sand or practice doing it in the air, make your arm really loose, loosey-goosey. Make your wrist really loosey-goosey when you make an S. Start at the top, loosey-goosey. Go around and down and then back up, S. Okay, try it again, loosey-goosey. No pointy edges with S's, because then it would look like a five. Right, start at the top. Go up, and then down, and then around, and up. S, T, start at the top. Straight line down. Pick up your finger, and then put a short straight line across. T, A, we make our circle. Don't pick up your finger. Trace a short line up and down. And then Y, short diagonal line down, pick up your finger, and then a long diagonal line. I never leave enough room on my sand tray. That is the word stay. Okay. So practice doing that for a few minutes. And then um, go and check on your um, leaf prints from yesterday. And I'll see you in just a few minutes. By now your leaf prints should be all dry. And so what I asked you to do yesterday was to find a picture of you or your family or cut something out from a magazine. Find an image that you want to use. Now I have chosen a picture of my dad, Steve, and my grandmother, Granny, and my grandfather, Pa. And this is a picture of my fa my dad's family, and that's me. And so I decided to use this picture um, for my um, portrait collage. So what I um, need you to get is I need you to get a paintbrush, some scissors. Now I chose, I think I want to use some glitter today. If you don't have glitter, one fun thing you could do is to cut up tiny, tiny pieces of paper or tissue paper so that you can sort of pretend like that is glitter or confetti. I decided I want to use some oil pastels. You could also use crayons. Those are the two extra things I want to use today. But if you want to get some ribbon or some yarn to embellish or decorate your um, portrait collage, you can do that. You can get some pretty jewels if you have any pretty jewels. And then the last thing you'll need is some glue. And my glue looks like this. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to pour a little bit of glue in a little tray, in a bowl, so that you can paint your glue on. And we've done this a lot at school. Um, instead of squirting a bunch of glue, you're just going to paint it on. And I think that liquid glue will work best for this. Um, if you have a glue stick and that's all you have, that's fine too. Okay, so what I have done is cut out the image really close. So I cut out all the extra things in the background so that it's just the people or the object that I want the image um, to be of. And now I'm gonna start to sort of embellish um, the rest of the portrait collage. So this is when you can start getting creative and getting crazy with your glitter and your crayons. I've already used a couple of um, oil pastels to trace the outline, but go start to go crazy um, on the rest of the page. That's all about, um, that's what collage and um, mixed media that we've done at school before, what it's all about. 
Right, so keep embellishing, embellishing. The more you add onto your collage, the more exciting and interesting it will become. And these will make great gifts um, to give to people in your family, um, to give to ooh, your dad for Father's Day. Father's Day is coming up next month. Um, but now you'll need to definitely let this part dry for a long time. And after it dries, you could even add another layer onto your portrait collage. After all this glue has dried, maybe you might want to go back over it with, um, I don't know, another thin layer of watercolor or some more leaf prints, maybe, but this time of different colors. So um, the possibilities are endless. All right, boys and girls, so after you finish embellishing your collage portrait, I want you to go around in your house and I want you to find a couple, couple, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, some of your toys that are small enough to fit on a piece of paper. Now, we're going to take a chance that this activity will work today. Um, it is supposed to rain, but if you notice, I'm outside right now and my little toys are casting shadows which is what we want and so the next step after you get your toys positioned and you can do this on paper you can do this on your driveway if you do it on paper though and it starts to rain you can bring it inside um, so it doesn't get ruined but what you're going to do is start to trace the shadows that your toys are making Trace, trace, trace. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna write what time it is. I think, oh, look, I have a watch on. <laughs> right now, my watch says that it is 1030, okay? So inside this tracing, I'll write 1030. So we can keep track now let's see see the sun's already gone in a little bit so the shadows aren't as as good but i'll trace the little shadow of my gnome and write 10 30. and my dear boy he's just barely casting a shadow if you'd rather wait for a sunny day to do this that's fine um, but then at 11 30 that's in one hour you're going to come back out and you can either use the same color to trace the shadow um, or you can use a different color to trace the shadow. So what we're doing is we're just watching to see how the shadows move throughout the day. Um, <laughs> look, my horse shadow has already moved. Well, that's kind of cool. My gnome shadow hasn't, but look, my deer shadow looks much better. But um, as the sun moves across the sky, um, throughout the course of the day, something will happen to the shadows that your toys cast on your paper or on the driveway. So it'd be fun to do this if you want to do it every single hour, you can. Or if you want to do it now and then come back um, this afternoon um, at like 2.30 or 3.30 or something and see where your shadows are at that point, that's another option. And then the last option, of course, is to wait for a super duper sunny day. Cause look, I can't even see the shadows at all now. Another option, if you are interested in shadows is do the same thing inside, but do it under a lamp and trace your toys shadows. Um, if we can't get outside today and find the sun. So that's just a fun um, little, uh, art activity that also teaches us about um, the earth and the sun and also teaches us about time and also teaches us um, about shadows and how shadows are cast. So I would love to see um, your art on our Facebook page. I would love to see the portrait collage um, on our Facebook page. Um, and of course, don't forget to keep recording um, all those sight words that we're doing on your sight word list or in your sight word book. And I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, boys and girls.
and girls. I'm at school this morning to do the lesson in the playhouse and I am making this mommy robin very upset. Do you hear how she's sounding the alarm? Someone is near her nest, and that someone is me. Oh, she's not happy. I think this mommy robin has laid a nest. One of these two nests is hers in our playhouse, and she does not like me in here. But. I am going to do the lesson in the playhouse today because it's so windy outside. So hopefully we can do this quickly so Mommy Robin will not be too angry at me. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, May the 15th, and I'm here at school on the playground to do our bird and flight experiment. Before we do our experiment, I wanted to read a little bit about um, birds in flight and read about <clears throat> their feathers, since that's a pretty important part of what makes them fly. Our feathered friends. Birds are the only animals with feathers. I'll say that one more time because it's really interesting. Birds are the only animal with feathers. A large bird, such as a swan, might have more than 25,000 feathers. And even a tiny little hummingbird has almost 1,000. So with all those feathers on a bird's body, it makes you wonder, well, are all the feathers the same? And if you remember from looking at, um, wow, I just saw a huge blue heron fly into the tree on our playground. And if I see it again, I'm going to stop so that we can go and look at it. But if you remember yesterday from looking at the yellow-bellied sapsucker, do you remember all the different color feathers that that yellow-bellied sapsucker had on its body? And why do you think that the feathers had to be different colors? Why do you think, look at this picture of a kestrel. Why do you think that the bird needs to have so many different shapes and sizes of feathers? What about the difference in feathers might help it in flight. So think about that for a few minutes. Feathers do keep birds warm and they help keep birds dry. They are very light, which makes it easy for the birds to stay in the air, stay in flight. So a bird stays in the air by flapping its wings up and down. As the feathers pull its wings down, the feathers push against the air. It's a great day for this lesson because it's windy. So you can see how the wind is moving the air around. And when a bird is flying, its feathers are pushing against the air that makes the wind. The feathers push against the air and it moves the bird up and forward. I'm still looking for that heron. <laughs> Some birds can also fly like airplanes. Airplanes use the force of the air to keep them in flight. This type of flight uses much less energy because the birds rarely flap their wings. Have you ever noticed how an airplane can fly? But an airplane doesn't flap its wings up and down. An airplane soars. Just like how you might look in the sky and see birds soaring. How can they stay up there if they're not flapping their wings back and forth? 
how can an airplane stay up there without it flapping its wings? Hmm. As air flows faster over the curved surface of the wing and slower underneath, so think about a bird's wing, fast air is going on top of it and slow air is going underneath it. All right, same as a um, airplane. It creates a force, so fast and slow. And here in the middle is the wing. It creates a force that presses against each other and that helps the bird lift up into the sky. This upward force is called lift. Pretty interesting. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do our experiment. And yesterday I had told you about a couple of things you needed for our um, bird balloon experiment. The only thing I forgot to tell you was a clip. So take a few seconds now and go and find a clip somewhere in your house. All right, so for our experiment, you need a balloon, tape, a Sharpie marker if you want to draw a face on your bird, a clip, and then I have found some feathers. I have to hold them because it's so windy. Or you might be able to find a leaf somewhere. So the first step is going to be to blow up your balloon, but do not tie a knot in it. Clip it with your clip. 